We've been studying this deletion for the last eight years. This is a genetic disorder that is caused by the deletion of approximately 60 genes on one of an individual's two chromosomes 22. This means that they have one intact chromosome 22 and one where a tiny section of DNA is missing. It has been known for quite a while that children with this deletion have developmental delay and it has been uh, noticed that um, individuals can also be more clumsy than other individuals. Um, but it's not really an area that has been very well studied at all. There is a PhD student in my research team who's called Adam Cunningham um, and he's very interested in motor problems in individuals with this deletion. And he gave a presentation about his findings and uh, after your, the presentation we started talking and also to start thinking about possible interventions to help them to better develop their motor skills. So we asked parents to fill out a questionnaire about coordination. Um, it came out as over 80% of parents thought um, their child had some sort of problem with, the co with coordination. Um, so to, to start backing up this sort of wide questionnaire data, we thought we should invite some families um, to the university to get some real, um, well-validated assessments done on their coordination um, with the occupational therapist. Good concentration, Dylan. Well, one of the main assessments we use is called the Movement Assessment Battery for Children, or Movement ABC for short. Uh, and it looks at three specific areas. So it looks at manual dexterity. Uh, the second area is aiming and catching. And the third area is area of balance. There were a couple of other assessments too that we did actually, which were different or in addition. And some of them included questionnaires to parents and to teachers. Because quite often they see the child in the actual context in which the child lives and moves. So information from parents and teachers is often really valuable and important. So using the assessments with the occupational therapist, we found that eight of the ten children um, had really quite severe coordination difficulties um, as measured by the movement ABC. But there didn't seem to be any real strong pattern of deficits um, across the children. Typically in an occupational therapy uh, intervention, a lot of the um, content of the intervention is, is developed based on the goals that individuals set. So in, in these children, for the one, the one child, it was important for them to learn how to throw a ball, and for the other one it was um, tying shoelaces. We then try to think what could be the underlying reasons for not achieving those goals. And we look at that and then we devise an intervention program that would meet those underlying skills in the first instance. So for example, tying shoelaces might be a matter that they have real difficulty using the two hands together. So if we practice that area, we'd be doing all sorts of activities which would be in using two hands together. And then the other approach that we would use is actually what we call task-specific practice, where we might break down the task into smaller aspects. So you started off just making the first pull. And then one week you came in and you showed me, you'd learned yourself, you used your little finger to keep the the lace from getting tangled up, didn't you? Yeah. And then the third approach that we might use is what we call compensatory strategies. So perhaps we might use elasticated shoelaces so then they wouldn't need to tie their shoelaces. In terms of how you evaluate that and how you um, consider that to, to improve, you can use quantitative outcome measures, which we did, um, but there's also the qualitative component, which is understanding how the children themselves feel about their performance on the goal. Generally, what we did notice in both of these children was that they, they both improved in their balance skills and they achieved the goals that they had set for themselves in terms of what they wanted to um, improve on. Um, we also noticed improvements in their problem-solving abilities um, and in um, a screening measure, which is um, a measure about sort of related to the problems that they have uh, in daily life, um, and there were some improvements um, in, in that particular outcome measure. And then there were improvements in the more quantitative measures which were related to sensory motor functioning. This is only the very start of the research we are doing. We're only starting to begin to understand these problems more. And uh, in addition to increasing awareness, we also hope that we will be able to develop more optimal um, uh, interventions for these children. In terms of moving forward, then, what we would do is start to gather more evidence around what the intervention components would be. And something that came out quite clearly from uh, this particular intervention was that the parents, which we hadn't really kind of 
planned was that there was actually the parents really uh, appreciated being in the clinic and 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 had some um, reported benefit from the the kind of feeling more supported and better information and learning some strategies. So so moving forward, we might be thinking about two different ways of developing interventions for 22Q deletion syndrome, and that might be more um, directed towards the child in terms of occupational therapy interventions or interventions in schools, or it might be towards the parent and helping the parent to better understand how. Uh, the condition might affect normal development and then strategies that they might use.